Right. Hello and welcome to the 21st webinar of 2023. And today is Breathe for the Brain because it is Love Your Lungs Week. Now, let's see if I can get this working straight away. Yes, here you go. Purpose of the webinars. This is the first time you've joined me, is to go from goal setting to goal getting and inspire more self-help responsibility and more self-peace, because I truly believe that self-peace will help us influence others. And therefore, as we influence others and they come to a better self-peace themselves, it can help influence world peace one person at a time. And I invite you to join me in my mission of achieving world peace one person at a time. Uh, this is a little bit about me. You can pause this on the replay if you want to. Um, one of my favourite quotes, it is no measure of health to be well adjusted to a profoundly sick society. And we are a sick society. We're toxic, we're having too many calories, not enough nutrients. Mentally as well, we're not being taught to look after ourselves. We're not being taught how to be mentally resilient and properly thoughtful anymore. But the good news is, it's up to you to decide to get healthier. And today, of course, we'll be talking about lungs. Um, what we will be covering is, uh, yeah, well, actually, you're going to need a stopwatch for a little bit later on. So uh, if you're watching the replay, go and get the stopwatch. We're going to cover some different types of breathing, maybe a link to ADHD, posture, parasympathetic breaks, stress, the Navy SEALs, secret weapon, you don't know who the Navy SEALs are, then they're the US Marines version of the SAS. So they are super hardy military people and they have a secret weapon that is linked to breathing and is very relevant to you. And a neurorespiratory assessment. So a few more things in there as well. Um, oh, this is one of my uh, coaching certificates. Another of my favorite quotes. Um, if you want to teach people a new way of thinking, don't bother trying to teach them. Instead, give them a tool, the use of which will lead to new ways of thinking. One of the things I hope that you're going to take me up on is actually using one of the tools that I use to help you think and work differently. Now, I'm also an MPM coach, a mental performance mastery coach. And that's one of the things I want to get through this entire year, all 10 pillars of mental performance mastery. I also teach the Magnificent Seven Health Strategies, think right, talk right, drink right, eat right, move right, detox right, and sleep right to help your body, brain, and bowels protect your health. I've narrowed that down to the functional three, so it's easy to remember, functional movement, functional nutrition, and functional philosophy. And then this tool um, that you can get from heroic.us will help you improve your energy, productivity, and engagement. Even if you get the free version, um, expect to have more energy, more productivity, and to be more connected in the next 30 days. And there's a number of heroic optimized protocols that you can install, and you can use this as QR code to go um, to my referral link. I'm going to update this at some point to get free 30-day trial of the premium app, so stay tuned for future webinars. Now, on with the show. The brain and the lungs. Um, 16 breaths per minute. I mean, okay, sometimes it's going to be less, sometimes it's going to be more. It depends on your lung capacity, how fit and healthy you are. And about 23,000 a day, give or take quite a lot. and will come back with another number later. That's 8.5 million breaths a day. Now, just imagine, okay, okay, you may get one breath a little bit, but imagine if you're breathing improperly for 8.5 million breaths every year, do you think that's gonna have a huge impact? Even if you get it wrong half the time, <laughs> okay? And um, if there's something wrong with the way that your brain and your breathing are all working together, do you think that it's worthwhile to actually get this checked properly? Because I'm gonna show you a couple of things you can check for yourself later very easily. If every breath you take actually matters, and there are some breathing techniques where just doing it one breath can actually help change how your brain is working. 
And it's very, very, very important for your brain because your brain it needs three things. It needs to be activated by um, basically stimulatory thought uh, and movement actually has a massive impact into the brain. If you watch my um, any of my chiropractic and neurology webinars, you know that movement of the spine actually provides 90% of the electrical input to the brain. Um, it also needs glucose, it needs fuel, and it also needs oxygen. And I think I'll put it on the next slide. Yes, 20% of your body mass, well, basically your brain is 2% of your body mass, um, but it uses 20% of the body's oxygen. And breathing optimally is essential for optimal brain function. So take a deep breath and realize you are feeding your brain when you breathe properly. And now all these slides are from the American Posture Institute, uh, what is most of them. And mouth breathing, which a lot of uh, people are, and is using uh, kids, um, can help, well, it can help. It will impair cognition, mood, and alertness, which um, one of my mentors is called functionally drunk. So if you are not breathing correctly through the night, you can expect to wake up functionally drunk with impaired, 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 impaired cognition, mood, and alertness. And yeah, fatigue, lower productivity, poorer quality of life, all ensue from not breathing properly. And mouth breathing does affect children as well, and um, impaired cognition, and it can actually lead to ADHD-like behavior and lower quality of life. Now, with ADHD, I mean, just imagine if you've got a child or you know someone who's got a child who's diagnosed with ADHD, they put on a drug, but actually all they need to do is have some breathing coaching or have some work on their breathing and the problems may disappear almost overnight. Now mouth breathing, cognition and posture, this is uh, the actual um, paper I wanted to share. Children with mouth breathing and postural abnormalities showed lower scores in cognitive function tests suggesting a potential link between mouth breathing, postural issues and compromised neurological neurologic outcomes. So you can go and look up and read more about that if you so wish. And I do have, and we'll be coming back to this later on. So breathing for your brain um, is one of the best things you do. You can actually teach yourself or you can have taught to you. Um, because the proper frequency of breathing helps balance carbon dioxide and oxygen. And while lots of people think about it, it's about getting oxygen in, it's all about getting the right carbon dioxide levels as well and making sure you you have an improved tolerance to carbon dioxide, especially if you're someone who's very anxious. You actually need to build up your tolerance to carbon dioxide and also learn how to get rid of carbon dioxide. Um, are you basically nasally breathing or are you actually a mouth breather? Are you breathing using your diaphragm or are you using your chest more? Um, chest breathing requires more energy. So as in basic, so if you if you just actually really sort of bend forwards and then as you breathe in, you have to lift your chest up and as you breathe out, put your chest down, there's more muscles involved. Now that's great if you're in a fight or flight state, like here, um, because you may want extra oxygen to run away from something or climb a tree, or if you're a bit stressed, you may want more oxygen to help your brain work a little bit better. But if you're not stressed, if you're just in normal daily activities, you do not want to be in stress all day long. You don't want to be breathing through, in, you know, using your chest muscles. You want to be breathing properly and calmly so your brain focuses and works properly and optimally. And luckily, you can control your stress by controlling your breathing. So, a couple of quick things to assess yourself. Um, I will just actually stop sharing. And I'm going to come back to me. Here we go. So, make sure that is correct. Yes. So, two things. First of all, okay, a simple little test. Get your hand and put this part just below your nose and just take three sets, so yeah, and just take three normal breaths. Now, 
Where did you feel the warmth? Where did you feel your breathing? Did you feel it on the top of your hand or did you feel it in here? Because if you're taking normal breathing and you're feeling it in the palm of your hand like this, then you're a mouth breather. And that is not good. You're going to have decreased oxygenation. You're going to have decreased utilization of something called nitric oxide. Your blood vessels will actually be more constricted. You'll be more likely to feel anxious. Your brain won't work properly. You may have sleeping issues. There's all kinds of things if you are a mouth breather. So if you're a mouth breather, it's a good sign that you need to do some work on your breathing. And you may actually want to book a full respiratory consultation. Now, the next exercise, this. This is where you're going to need, oh, look at that, my heroic app is on there, um, a stopwatch. So let's actually do this myself here as well. Now, this is something called your Bolt score, or your, it, your body oxygen level test. I think that's what it stands for. Um, it's on the next slide. So you're going to need a stopwatch. And what you want to do is you just want to take a normal breath in and a normal breath out. So it's not a deep breath and then all the way out. It's just a normal breath in and a normal breath out. And then you want to plug your nose just so you can't breathe at all. And then you just want to hold your breath until you feel like you need to have a breath in. So you're not trying to really forcefully hold your breath. You're just looking for that first indicator. So is your neck getting tight? So I'm just going to do this now. So normal breath in, normal breath out. Hold my So it's about 30 seconds or so. Now, if that time that you can really easily hold your breath, if it's less than 20 seconds, again, it's a sign that your perhaps your mitochondria aren't working. Those are the things that actually use oxygen to produce energy. You can have a problem with oxygen delivery. There's a number of things that could be going on. So that score you should be able to hold your breath easily for 20 seconds. We're not talking about like holding on for 20 seconds, so we're talking about really easy for 20 seconds. Okay, so let's get back to, so that's two. Uh, next test, actually, because I'll talk about posture, actually, and then we'll get back to slides, is are you test breathing or abdominal breathing? Um, but posture, posture, so if you actually, if you actually slump, if you actually slump, put your head forwards, and just take a deep breath in, and then breathe all the way out. And then come up, okay, and take a deep breath in and breathe all the way out. Which was easier? When you're upright or when you slumped in poor posture? And again, if you actually find that when you're breathing, it's your chest that's moving and your belly isn't, so if you find it's just your chest and not your belly, then again, you're breathing with your chest. That's not a good sign. Now let's go back to sharing the screen more. No, I don't want to share this on Facebook. Where is the screen share button? Ah, okay. All right, let's get back to this share. Oh, it's gone all the way back to the beginning. That's funky. So where were we? Here we go. So the, there you go. The names of the tests. The no, I nose or mouth breathing. Let's make it a little bit larger. And the bulk, the body oxygen level test. And then posture. Um, yes, directly raised. Oh, let's go to another one. Let's actually stop sharing. Let's go to the parasympathetic posture break. This is a good one as well. So. I'll actually stop sharing and go back to the full screen again. So, yeah, this is a really good exercise, especially if you have got poor posture. Um, you basically, parasympathetic system, by the way, is the one that allows you to rest, relax, digest, and heal. Okay, and well, you know, just spread your arms apart. So you're not, don't, don't 
bring your shoulders up, just spread your arms apart. Okay, and just put your head back. And then make sure you're breathing through your nose, so close your lips together, breathe through your nose. Big breath in. And you can, you know, you can breathe into your belly and into your chest if you want to. And just do that for a few times. And you should feel that it actually makes you feel better. Should, you should feel more relaxed. You should feel maybe slightly energized. And you can do this for you know, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten breaths if you want to. And, and it's really great for taking micro breaks, especially if you can't you know, spend the time to get up and walk around and exercise. But again, you can do this standing. It's going to have even more benefits as well. And try and take a break. I mean, ideally, you want to take a break from sitting every 20 minutes if you really want to stop the rot in your spine and your body. But at least every hour, you should be taking some kind of micro break. So let's go back to here. Ah, I seem to have two versions of this, and that's why. Okay, so let's go to slideshow. And let's just see, is this the right one? In the right order? Yes, it is. Okay, slideshow. So slideshow from here. Respiratory quick assessment. There we go. Posture, parasympathetic break. Now, one of the things that I teach my clients is to better than the, the um, parasympathetic break is the hummingbird exercise for really getting your vagus nerve and your parasympathetic system working. Now, you don't have to fly around and get uh, nectar from, from flowers, but it's called the hummingbird. Um, because you put yourself into a position where your arms are outstretched behind your head's outstretched as well. And you can just try it to normal abdominal breathing as well. It's a great way to relax. But this, this is the secret weapon of the Navy SEALs. It's called box breathing. Now, this comes from a yogic technique. So this box breathing has been around for thousands of years. It wasn't invented by the Navy SEALs. But there was one particular Navy SEAL, which I'll talk to you in a minute, that is, is probably why this is so popular. And one of the types of coaching work I do is this unbeatable mind seal fit, which I'll show you in a moment, um, coaching. So box breathing is quite easy. Quite easy. You breathe in for the count of four or five. So deep breath in, and then it's best done in a in sort of sitting meditative kind of posture. And you can do it walking, but it's best if you're just sitting still. So you breathe in for the count of four or five. You hold your breath for the same count. You breathe out to four or five, and then you hold your breath for the count of four or five. And then you repeat it, and you repeat it, and you repeat it. Now, this has a number of powerful effects, which I won't go into at the moment. It can help relax your system. It can help improve focus and concentration as well. But basically, it's about getting each part of the breath the same. So it's in, hold, out, hold. And each part is the same length of time. Now, the reason it's probably so popular, and I love telling this story at the moment, and you can actually look up Seal Pit, and you can also look up Mark Divine. Now, Mark Divine was a Navy Seal. Um, and he was so successful at leading people that he was asked to actually build a Navy SEAL training program. Now, normally, Navy SEALs, um, yeah, 85% normal failure rate for new Navy SEAL trainees. Okay. However, if you use Mark Devine's mental training methods and his methods, you get a 90% success rate using the unbeatable mind system. And I use some of the unbeatable mind system in my coaching, especially if people are very stressed or they just want more resilience. They don't want to be more hit us like an Navy SEAL. But as you will realize when you have to go through this, it's not about being some kind of alpha male, bravo people. There are plenty of females who do this. Um, coaches are doing this. Olympic athletes are using this system. Um, and lots of business leaders are using this because it's making them think more clearly and access to the flow state. Um, and there are a number of parts to this. It's arousal control is all about breathing properly. There's visualization, there's mental control, and there's what's called front side focus. And those are the four basic principles of mental toughness in the unbeatable mind system. Uh, if that's of interest to you, then uh, reach out, um, and it's something that we can help train you in. 
And I want to get back to more sort of the breathing side of things more directly, which is the first part of the whole unbeatable mind system anyway. Make every single breath count. Um, there's actually, you know, depending on your breath rate, it's actually between 17,000 and 30,000 breaths a day. Now imagine if you're getting that wrong 17 to 30,000 times a day. You're not do, optimally breathing. How much better would you feel if you're breathing properly? So if you failed either the bulk test um, or if you're breathing through your mouth, then it's going to be worth you actually booking a complete neurorespiratory assessment at the clinic. So we can look at how your neck is working, your chest muscles are working, diaphragm is working, see if we can find out how to get you working better and give you some of the right exercises to do uh, so that you can start breathing for your brain optimally uh, because your health is your greatest asset. So if you are looking to book an appointment, whether you're an existing client or not, you can give me a call. And um, if you've got my email, if you're on my email list, we'll actually send you a special offer that we're doing at the moment for this as well. And again, this is really for people who can come into the clinic. I do work with people virtually online, so that's more for the coaching. We can do some breath work online. We can do some of this online as well. But this is more for the local people who want to actually get to the clinic, or at least get to the clinic at least once for a full assessment. So, next week, um, we will be talking about children and posture and maybe ADHD. And if you want help with your breathing, or if you are interested in the, there you go, the box breathing, the silver fit, or the what's it called, the unbeatable mind system, and you want to improve your mental toughness, then let me know. And there's my website details, beatbloodpressure.com and bodyimbalanceuk.com. Thank you so much for watching. And yeah, post any questions in the comments, either on YouTube or email me back if you're on my email list and you're watching replay. Okay, bye for now and be super funky. Um, good.